spiritual self is never lost. It permeates absolutely everything, even though it is fundamentally different from everything, for its form is purely spiritual. It is the basic source of all perceptions of identity through countless transformations. It takes up in any manner and form, all things into itself and yet always remains itself unchangeable and in the eternal symmetry of its own size. It is an invariable size within the manifold activities of the universe and the universes in general. The human restricted personality is only conscious from time to time, in between there are large gaps in consciousness. But even when death reaches the human being, the seer and recognizer in him, the spirit cannot die, for as a fragment of the creation, it is of eternal duration, like also the overall consciousness block. On the objective side, nothing can touch the observant, subjective self. This self, existing for eternal times, which is the life of life itself, cannot be proven materially because it is of a purely spiritual form and nature, but it requires no proof for a rational being because the spirit itself is its own proof. Hence, only beings living in poverty of consciousness demand proofs for the existence of the spirit for in their primitive thinking, they cannot recognize its existence from the spiritual acts and occurrences. The spirit itself is the basic foundation of any knowledge process, and the spirit itself animates every organ and every capability, and to be sure, out of the drive for development and the existence of life. The spirit, this universal self, is confused with the empirical self as a result of mental impurities. When a human being breaks through the veil surrounding his self and removes the shrouds of the material urge that restrict and cover it, he instantly acquires, in the physical body, the determination of his being. The inner spiritual being, the life of life itself, which is infinitely simple and uncomplicated, forms a unity of transcendental reality, cognition, knowledge, wisdom, love, and freedom. The human being is not a mere biological phenomenon. In him is also a small part of a fine material conditioned, psychological organism in spiritual form, which is loaded with latent potentialities, with the might of all creational forces. Philosophical insight into the psychological nature of human beings forces the recognition and knowledge of the reality of the cosmic consciousness, the creational life force as the basis and life of psychological beings. The human being must not only see human beings on their biological and mental planes, rather, he must also grasp them on the psychological and spiritual planes. Everything that the human being inherits, everything that he brings with him from the past through billions of existences, everything that he, in this life or in past lives, has enjoyed, known, read, learned, or experienced lies hidden not in his subconscious but in the memory banks. Therefore, he does not master the technique of concentration, and therefore, he does not command his subconscious and does not make full use of all his knowledge and capability. The longing for all his knowledge and capability coming from past lives, for the experiences and for the wisdom, thus does not lie hidden deeply within him. He must only recognize and accept the truth thus, acknowledge it and utilize it himself. But for this, it is necessary for him to fight against his own stupidity and to acknowledge that the material intellect does not constitute a human being if it does not also work together in the same measures with the spiritual intellect. When this happens and when the human being recognizes his spirit, the whole abundance gathered in previous lives will arise again in knowledge and wisdom, capability, freedom, love and peace and will richly benefit him, once he learns to get all these values from the memory banks and to utilize them himself. Knowledge, might, strength, wisdom, freedom and love are the creational inheritance of the Absolute and they are the human being's birthright. The human being, through his consciousness and through his spirit is a center of thought, might, strength, and influence on everything and everyone. He does indeed, have a body, but he himself is not the body. The body is only an instrument and a servant of the spirit and the overall consciousness block, it is the spirit's dwelling but not its prison. The body is the temple of the radiating spirit the self-luminous innermost life, the creational self. The body is the castle of the spirit, 
which brings all forces into motion. The human being knows from this that he also breathes the breath of the spirit and not only physical breath. The human being only learns of his spirit through meditation, through knowing deliberate inner contemplation, through deep immersion into the quietest chambers of the consciousness and the spiritual self, and by directly looking into the mirror of the inner and innermost life. He may not do this, however in the manner in which the earth human beings become fooled by religious and sectarian frauds for this meditation is not a spiritual display but only a fantasy filled releasing of unreal wishes of the imagination. Real meditation in spiritual form requires an understanding gained towards one's own being and self, and a self-holding of both facts before one's eyes, that the existence of the eternal reality and truth and the deeply rooted unity of all manifestations, from a star to the form of a substance, from nature to spiritual life, are altogether only one in creational balance. Every human being, in his innermost essence, is a manifestation of the creation, and only because of this is it possible for everyone to become one with the infinite. Reflecting upon these truths of the essential existence of the creational produces knowledge and certainty. The direct display of the truth supersedes all useless objections. The realization of the truth makes everything down to the finest detail clear and self-explanatory. Life on earth offers no full satisfaction to human beings, it is not the entirety, the real is found on the other side of the material. Material life only serves as a guide, in order to reach the fine-sided, the spiritual. Material life is only the area of activity that gives human beings conditions and purposes, in order to establish relationships with the spirit and the all-greatest, the creational. It is completely wrong to restrict the field of view of life only to observable phenomena and to let the valuations of objective worth determine things. The highness and greatness of life depend on to what extent it is raised to the law of the innermost life in the highest being. The relationships between human beings are only justified as long as they do not distract from the eternal laws of the spiritual nature. Neither social welfare nor national improvement are possible through merely adhering to shadows and disregarding the essential substance. The core of the truth does not belong to an individual human being alone because the truth forms being and life of everything that exists at all. Only that, which is one and united, can be indivisible and all-inclusive within a self-identical existence. This is the full extent of achievements and the culmination point of all aspirations and ideals of life. In this integral spiritual view of life, the ethical basis of social and domestic relationships is rooted. Society is the totality of the individuals, intended to pierce through the veil and to enter into the realms of the immortal being, into the creation itself. The human interconnections mean nothing less than the aspiration to live in the daily life of a spiritual form, which is there in the deep background of all existing beings, but which cannot be found in the absence of truth. Through this, the love for the spiritual is lost more and more, and the human being's sense turns more and more to the material and his material intellect. Altruistic love is the expression of the visible unison with the infinite life, which is in the whole universe. If a family or society or nation is perceived as a means of separation of the one from the other, then such a family, society, or nation, no matter how great the goal of the concentration of human beings may be, can never succeed. Every smallest connection must flow into the absolute oneness, which does not exclude an iota from itself. This truth must always remain before the eyes of the human being during everyday work if his deeds and actions and his thinking should be free of selfishness and in harmony with the universal events. Life is a teaching of the spirit for the spirit. The correct behavior of the family and the administration of the country and the society form a part of the universal determinations, which have equipped the totality of the beings with strictly impartial laws. The human being lives because the creation exists, and his life must be so balanced and relatively perfect, as the creation itself is balanced and relatively perfect. The human being lives in the creation being it breathes and hovers in him. 
the lack of the spiritual, for which it is worth living, or the need for a practical life philosophy and life psychology in the present time is often responsible for the crisis in the lives of human beings and in their concerns. Already for a long time, the modern ranting human being has made great efforts to find peace and freedom, but so far, all his efforts have fruitlessly blown away and escaped. In the absence of real knowledge and the truth of a healthy, reasonable lifestyle that would give him inner and real balance and peace, he has committed himself to abnormal ideologies and to destructive, dangerous, and harmful religious philosophies, which lead him into even greater consciousness-related poverty and keep him away from the actual life, as this has already been the case here since ages ago. Natural human understanding defends itself against allowing the circle of inappropriate unreal religious dogmas to press itself into the square of the dominant truth, and this is especially brought to thriving existence through the new time of the Aquarius era, through new religious fanatics, sectarians, and frauds, however, at the present time, the religious delusion is still too widespread to be able to create a useful defense in great measure, consequently, Toward the turn of the millennium, many thousands of human beings will senselessly die in the sectarian delusion by murder and suicide. The erroneous religious philosophies, with their colossal confusions and delusional claims, reduce in the human being his inner strength, which would maintain his consciousness and could help him to surpass himself and thrive in his striving and which would make it possible for him to attain inner growth and inner peace which stand in right proportion to the external achievements and conditions. In response to a long perceived necessity, here and there, earth human beings, who are mistakenly referred to as leading thinkers, have made personal but dangerously unreal efforts to take the allegedly best out of the religions and to bring them into a unity with modern thinking, in order, thus, to work out a new life philosophy and life psychology for the current humanity. But at the same time, these alleged and unreal thinkers don't consider that through this, they increase the religious delusion once more, out of ignorance of the fact that they themselves are very badly trapped in unreal religions, and consequently, they are, accordingly, only able to think and act in unreal ways, in an unreal, delusional, delusion-believing, murderous, and consciousness-poor man, by what means much death and destruction arise. Hence, for obvious reasons, success is often equal to zero. But the human being of the new time, the human being of the Aquarius era, now faces an easily solvable problem, for if he now lays the foundation stone of the truth, then he gains a whole new structure of philosophical and psychological values for a happy, free, and peaceful spiritual life in the future. A free spiritual life, which is based on everything that represents the best in the cultural and spiritual inheritance of the earth of spiritual truth. If the earth human being now finally recognizes and acknowledges this truth, completely frees himself from all religions, sects, and other erroneous teachings and their delusional imaginations and finally aligns himself with the spiritual and creational laws, then he has triumphed. Only the truth is serviceable and brings the human being progress. Religion, erroneous teachings, and sectarianism, however, are unserviceable to the human being and throw him back into the deepest darkness. Billy says that was very detailed, Semiaza, and I hope that your explanations find fertile ground. But now, I would still like to direct another question to you which has been giving me some headaches since last night so, it was yesterday, on the 14th of April, exactly five minutes before midnight, I just came back from a short night walk and stood on the west side of our house in the garden. Suddenly, I heard a strange whistling sound, which approached at breakneck speed from the east and vanished in a flash to the west, and I also believed to see a very large shadow, but of what I am not completely sure. I knew immediately that I had already heard this strange tone before, and to be sure, at 9.00 o'clock in the morning on the 2nd of June 1942, when I saw an enormous flying disc, shooting away over our village and our house. I know the strange tone very well, and therefore, I couldn't have been mistaken. Thus, it must have been a beamship, 
which rushed by. Now, it makes me wonder whether this was you or anyone else of you, and why did you not then get 